Yeah, as you can see, the, the graveyard, the, the, the mausoleum of the once great flying tomato uh, pizza restaurant, which was like the best uh, pizza joint here in town, right? At the time? It was a pizza joint. I mean, it was a town. pizza joint, yes. I mean, the uh, service I'm not was... Sure it was the best. A lot of people really thought that. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, they had good service, right? No. Oh. They had the worst service. Okay. Maybe well, ever. But the food was good. Like, I remember the sauce was like bomb, right? I mean... They no, had uh, they had the tables. The tables. They you did could, you have tables. That you could carve your name into. into. So. For those of you that don't know, like me and this guy, we've had many successful, lots of perfectly yeah. wonderful bands. Remember, we started out as the Menstrual Pains, but then we got sued by the Cramps, and then we we changed our name to the Deluxe Interiors, but then Lux Interior sued us. We were trying to do a, a boy band, and we we called it the Cute Cumbers. That didn't work. Didn't take. That was when we were in our pop phase. And also, we were men, so it didn't really work out. Right, and we're not yeah. cute. And yeah, so. I remember when we uh, you know, played our first show at Rubber Gloves. Yeah, like Rubber Gloves is way over there. Yeah. And then we, we parked we way parked over here. In, yeah, way over like, Yeah, I believe it was Decatur. Because they only had two parking spots. Right, and we loaded in from there. Uh, good thing they had a, one of those flatbed dollies. <laughs> yeah, it made the Hammond organ that much easier to right, move right. otherwise. Oh. So then we changed it to something that was like super long right, that yeah, could, we wanted, nobody could sue us over, right? So, to, yeah, yeah. So it was uh, four scores and seven tiers ago because we were, you know, emo. Uh, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation. I mean, it rolls off the tongue. It does. I yeah, mean, it's poetic. Even. We, we were very popular because, yeah. you know, they, they couldn't get us out of their mouths. Yeah. They called us the the Gettysburg Address, or sometimes just the address. The address, yeah. yeah. That was good times. At, at the height of the band, we had, you know, 17 people max. I mean, that's not unreasonable. No. I mean, look at Slipknot. Yeah, it's funny, the, the lens of time. How, how simple it was, how close we were. We were right there at the precipice, right there on the edge. Right, Aerosmith. I don't want to talk about that. No, we, we got we got to tell him. That he was asking about it. You know, we, we we had a we had we had a good run, and we were right there, right on the on the edge of the cliff of success, where people always dive down into success. All right, I'm gonna set the stage. It's 1993. We were just about to get a grip. Yeah. We were gonna open up for Aerosmith at the Groovy Mule, and then this guy. Crucial as I, as I was, I suppose, in a 17-member band, I, um, I couldn't make it that night. Couldn't make it. I don't blame you. I mean, it's okay that I'm a barista. That's fine. Look, I, I guess after all this time, I owe it to you. The truth is, at that time, I was working for Small Fellas Movers, and we were doing a job and an accident happened and I was trapped under a china hutch for a month and a half. That's why you didn't see me for a, for That a explains while. why you mispracticed so many times. Yep, yep, yep. How did you survive a month and a half? The nice lady that owned the house brought me bagels and uh, milk. Usually she, she was good for two to three seven course meals a day. Yeah, so we didn't really do much after that. That was kind of the, oh, kind of fell apart. that you, you, uh... And now you know. Now you, yeah. now you know why I don't like talking. But that explains why we had so few practices that month and a half. 